in a small plot beside of the road at Calvary Cemetery in St. Louis, Missouri, lies the remains of a man whose bravery culminated in a showdown with the United States Supreme Court. Dred Scott was born in Virginia somewhere around 1799 and sadly was born into slavery. Unfortunately, the stain of slavery on our country and the mistreatment of African Americans was felt everywhere in different ways for different people. As such, the record keeping was minimal to say the least. What we do know is that Dred Scott was taken by Peter Blow along with other slaves to work on his farm in Alabama. This farm proved to be unsuccessful and they moved to St. Louis, Missouri. Historians will debate when this happened, but Dred Scott was sold to Dr. John Emerson. Since Emerson was an army officer, he moved frequently, which meant Dred moved along with him. He moved through Illinois, eventually making his way to what was then the free territory of Wisconsin, now Minnesota. While there, Dred met and married his wife, Harriet. Harriet's owners transferred ownership to Emerson. Emerson moved back to Missouri, leaving the Scott family behind to be leased. Emerson would marry Eliza Irene Sanford. Eventually, Dred Scott and his family and the Emersons would move back to Missouri, a slave state. Emerson died and his widow, Irene, inherited everything, including the Scotts. Dred Scott attempted to purchase his family's freedom from Irene and she refused. This series of events would set up a brave legal battle that is still talked about today. There was a precedent known as once free, always free, meaning that if a slave were moved to a free state and held voluntarily for an extended period of time, then they would be granted freedom. Dred and Harriet Scott filed lawsuit against Irene. They were suing for their freedom. The Missouri Circuit Court ruled in their favor and their freedom was secured. However, that victory would be short-lived. Irene appealed the decision which made its way to the Missouri Supreme Court. The Missouri Supreme Court ruled that Missouri didn't have to abide by other states' laws and that the Dred Scott case should have been filed in the Wisconsin Territory. Dred and Harriet Scott's lawsuit would be combined into one suit as the case was now being filed in federal court. Eventually, this lawsuit would be settled in the Supreme Court. Abolitionists and pro-slavery forces were battling for the heart and soul of this nation. This case came before the Supreme Court when that battle was reaching high intensity. Politicians were weighing in on this as well as the public. Pro-slavery politicians were doing their best to appease their base. The newly formed Republican Party weighed in on the issue led by Abraham Lincoln, who was by then not yet president. Lincoln would make speeches during the aftermath of the Supreme Court decision, speaking in favor of Dred Scott. Chief Justice Roger B. Taney would deliver the court decision on March 6, 1857. The court ruled that any person descended from Africa... Any person, not just slaves, were not citizens. The Missouri Compromise was also voided, the court saying they exceeded the powers of Congress. The court ruled against Dred and Harriet Scott. This case, which the Supreme Court would hope settle the issue, ignited a fire throughout the fractured country. This helped push the country to the brink of civil war. As mentioned, we know that Dred Scott had originally been taken by Peter Blow. Mr. Blow's adult children had turned against slavery and actually paid for Scott's freedom suit. Eventually, those who owned the Scott family transferred ownership to the Blow family. The Blow family would give them their freedom. However, sadly and unfortunately, Dred Scott didn't see too much freedom. He would be inflicted with tuberculosis and pass away a short time later. The country eventually did split, and the war was waged. After the war, the 14th Amendment settled the issue of citizenship, stating that all persons born in the United States are citizens. It was not only an honor to tell the story of Dred Scott. It was an eye-opening journey for me in many ways. This man was brave, and he fought for his right to be free. 
The Supreme Court decision really shows the state of the country at that time. This is probably, I would say, one of the most humbling videos that I've ever made, and it really just hit home with me. I do want to take some time to talk about the grave site. It was lost to time for a very long time. In 1957, the grave site was rediscovered. On March 6, 2017, which marked the 160th anniversary of the Supreme Court decision, a ceremony was held on the steps of the Maryland State House where the great-great-grand-nephew of Justice Taney met with the great-great-granddaughter of Dred Scott. In 2012, a statue was placed of the Scots at the old courthouse in downtown St. Louis where the case was originally heard. And I do want to thank you all for watching this video. This is a very important video, and I would encourage you to go read up more on the uh, the Dred Scott case and the bravery that it had to have taken to do that, knowing even though that, I mean, he was in the right. I mean, he was. If you read through it all, I, I truly believe that based on the law, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about from a um, from a standpoint of right or wrong because we know it was wrong what happened to him. But even using the laws at the time, he was in the right based on those existing laws, but it just seems like everywhere he went, other than that very first case, which ruled in his favor, he was just met with racist decisions, honestly. And it's an honor to be at his grave today, but it is also very sad what not only Dred Scott had to go through, but every person of color at that time uh, that was here, what those people had to go through as well. But... Thank you all for watching. It is an honor for me to be here in St. Louis, Missouri today to pay respects to Dred Scott. Unfortunately, Dred Scott has no idea what type of an impact that he made, but thankfully he, uh, he did make an impact. If you like cemetery videos, that's all I do. I do all 100% cemetery related videos. Please like, subscribe, and join. Uh, I visit the famous, the infamous, the never heard of. I also just take strolls through the cemetery and sometimes bring you along. Once again, from St. Louis, Missouri, I will see you again soon.